Hello, Manju, Commissioner Roman. How are you? Good. Yeah. I noticed the link in our city email calendar doesn't work directly. We have to cut and paste it. Commissioner Centeno, how are you? Great, George, how are you? Good. Good. Council Member Davis, thanks for joining. I know you're going to not have your camera on, but we appreciate your presence. Yeah, good evening to everyone. Thanks for, for serving. I'm just a listener here. <laughs> yeah. All right, new Commissioner Joe Palazzola, welcome. Thank you. I guess soon to be new after we get you sworn in. Got to learn how to use this system. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> there should be a camera icon that probably has a red line through it. If you click on it, you, your camera will come on. Uh oh, he left. Yeah, sometimes it takes a couple tries to get it to work right. There he is. Welcome again. You're on mute. Uh, you're probably on audio mute this time. Okay, how's that? That's uh, that's great. You've you've uh, you've uh, made it over the first hurdle, and that is, can you get signed in for the meeting? <laughs> That's the first test. No, this is my first blue jeans meeting. Oh, I know. Yeah. Just as I was getting good at uh, Zoom, I then started having to use uh, these other these other systems. Mr. Gaia, thanks for joining. I think we're Hi. gonna Yeah, we're gonna be able to get you on early, I think. I have a few preliminaries, but you're going your group will be first up once we get to that agenda item. Commissioner Devermont, welcome. Uh, how are you, sir? I'm doing just fine. I'll be doing better when we have a quorum, but uh, but it's early still. We have three minutes. I see we have a I see we have a council member joining us today. Y yes, uh, we exchanged pleasantries. Uh, just here to observe. Just here to observe. Fair enough. Nice to nice to hear from you, council member. Good to see you. I'll be glad when we can meet in person again someday. 
uh, I think it makes a big difference. I sure. Say, How, are How are you guys? Good. Commissioner Mota, welcome. How has life been, Commissioner Centeno? Pardon me? How is life? How are you? Oh, sir? great. It's great. Yeah, a little bit warm, but uh, other than that, life is good. Golf game is, uh, is good? I got my 18 in this morning, so life yeah. is good. Good. Welcome, Commissioner Miller. Check your name off. Uh, so I got a, a call from Commissioner Scott and she had a family emergency. She's gonna join us, uh, but she'll be late. And uh, Ms. Parson, are you on? We have uh, Lisa Parson yet. She is vital to this operation. Commissioner Cruz, welcome. Here she is. Hi, hey, everyone. Welcome, Ms. Parson. You are like the linchpin for this whole operation. We don't have you. This this machine doesn't work. Hey, uh, and also welcome uh, soon to be Commissioner uh, Ramirez. Looks like you're on as well. Yes, I am. Thank you. Yeah. So what? Um, we have a quorum. Uh, so I'd like to get started. Uh, Commissioner Scott let me know that she had a family emergency, so she's going to be late. Uh, Commissioner Vasari, I have not heard from. Uh, Ms. Parson, have you heard from her? I have not. Okay. Um, I, I want to welcome um, uh, uh, City Council Member uh, Davis, who I notice has joined us, and former City Council Member McCown, and Chief Seabrooks, and if I miss anyone, uh, please forgive me. So I think what we should do um, is call the roll and then swear in our new commissioners. Can you do that, Ms. Parson? I can. I'm going in alphabetical order. Uh, Chair Brown. Present. Vice Chair Devermont. Present. Commissioner Basari McLaughlin. Recording as absent. Commissioner Cruz. Present. Commissioner Centeno. Present. Commissioner Miller. Present. Commissioner Mota. Present. All right. I don't think I call attendance for our new folks just yet. No. Did um, you call Ramon? I'm about to. Commissioner Ramon. 
present. Aye. And uh, Commissioner Scott is absent. Okay. Yeah, she'll be late. All right. Oh, she'll be late. Okay. We're going to swear in our new members, and then I'll invite them to. I'll welcome them and invite them to right. say a word or two. Let's do it. Continuing in my alphabetical order. He comes before R. Late in the day, just making sure. Uh, Commissioner Joseph Palazzolo, can you make sure I know how to pronounce your last name? Palazzolo. Palazzolo, okay. All right, we are going to swear you in right now. So just repeat after me. I, Joseph Palazzolo. I, Joseph Palazzolo. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California and the Constitution of the State of California and that I will faithfully discharge and I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Public Safety Reform and Oversight Committee. The duties of the Public Safety Reform and Oversight Committee. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Commission. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, formerly civilian, now Commissioner Ramirez, repeat after me. I, do you pronounce it Luis or Luis? Luis, you're correct. Okay. I, Luis Ramirez. I, Luis Ramirez. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California and the Constitution of the State of California and that I will faithfully discharge and that I will faithfully discharge duties of the Public Safety Reform and Oversight Commission. The duties of the Public Safety Reform and Oversight Committee. Welcome. Welcome to the commission. Thank you. Uh, and Ms. Carson, before I start talking, could you also please hit the record button? Make sure it's already recording cool. on my end. Terrific. Okay. I have a so, audio. Let me start by uh, welcoming everybody and, and welcome to our new commissioners. We're really uh, thankful and optimistic that uh, we've got uh, we're back up to full uh, full strength, and we look forward to uh, working with you together to try to uh, make public safety and policing uh, the best it can be uh, for all of us. Um, <laughs> I would like to invite each of you to um, uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself uh, uh, quickly, uh, and then we'll move forward. So let's start in alphabetical order with uh, Commissioner Palazzolo. Well, I've uh, been a resident of Santa Monica since I think 1981. Uh, I have spent uh, the better part of my adult life doing a lot of community service, mostly local. Uh, and I thought uh, getting on a commission, a city commission, would be a good continuance of that public service. Terrific, thank you. Uh, Commissioner, and welcome again. Uh, Commissioner Ramirez, uh, sure. a few words. Uh, thank you very much. I, I've been a Santa Monica resident since 1993. I was a uh, classroom teacher and assistant principal at John Adams Middle School for uh, 16 years of my 30 plus years in education. Recently retired and uh, always felt the need to continue to, to uh, give back and serve the city. So uh, that's why I'm here. Terrific, thank you. Uh, next, I wanted to uh, talk to the commissioners about uh, the minutes. You, um, you'll recall we've uh, kicked the can down the road uh, for a few meetings because the minutes weren't quite ready. They're now ready and they're sitting in our shared uh, SharePoint file space, and uh, we really could use each of you to um, uh, help us review them so that we can get them on the consent calendar for the next meeting. And uh, when you're looking at it, and I'll, I'll review and give some feedback uh, to Ms. Parson, um, who's our, our drafts person, uh, make sure we're trying to make sure we have a complete historical record. So if we refer to a, if we adopt a work plan, the work plan should be at attached. We've adopted bylaws. The bylaws should be fine in final form and attached. That sort of thing. So just um, 
you know, if you, uh, well, all of us are charged with reviewing and approving the minutes. So when you get a chance, please, uh, uh, please do that, and we'll get those done either at a special meeting or, or in October. Uh, next, uh, I wanted to um, uh, remind uh, many members that are present and our commissioners that early on we uh, had a, a question about how can community members volunteer and help the commission, and we um, uh, unanimously approved a rule for how that can be done, and there's really four aspects to it. Uh, one, the person has to meet the requirements of being a commissioner. Uh, two, uh, the individual should write a, um, a an email or or short statement explaining what they'd like, why they'd like to be a, a volunteer, uh, and what what they uh, would like to contribute. Uh, and then um, the the uh, we have one ad hoc com committee. That's the community engagement committee. That committee will um, first approve the volunteers, and then the full commission will have to approve the volunteers. So it's really not a difficult process. But uh, but if you want, if you're interested in volunteering, you can uh, reach out to me directly or to Ms. Parson. Uh, or frankly, to any uh, commissioner, uh, but uh, ultimately, you know, someone give me a heads up that that you're applying, and I'll shepherd it through. Okay, uh, tonight uh, our first agenda item is session, and what we're doing is we're starting um, uh, what I hope will be a regular feature of community listening sessions. And um, we'd like to invite groups from all sectors of our city to uh, come and uh, give us their views on public safety and policing and what they think we should do. And tonight I, I, we have the League of Women Voters. Uh, we have uh, some members from the Santa Monica Black Agenda. And we have some uh, members from the Coalition for Police Reform. And um, I'm going to, uh, we have them listed as three A, B, and C, uh, and our, their names are group one, two, and three right now. But what we will do is we'll give each group about 20 minutes, uh, up to 20 minutes, you don't have to take the full time, to tell us whatever you'd like to tell us, and then um, we'll allow the commissioners up to 10 minutes to have a little bit of a Q&A um, related to their uh, their contribution, and then we'll move to the next group. So um, let's uh, start with uh, 3A, and uh, the League of Women Voters. Is it Ms. Zerniskaya, are you going to be speaking? Yes, the group? Um, I'll be speaking for the League of Women Voters of Santa Monica. Okay, so, uh, great. And so, um, you know, please go ahead and, and uh, begin, and I'll uh, keep track of the time and uh, and try to keep it under 20 minutes. Great, thank you. Uh, it shouldn't take that long. Um, okay. So good evening, commissioners and members of the public. And um, I saw we have a city council member and the police chief as well on the call. My name's Natalia Zernitska. I serve as the president of the League of Women Voters of Santa Monica, and I'm very grateful for this opportunity to share the league's perspective on key issues regarding police reform in Santa Monica. So by way of introduction, the League of Women Voters of Santa Monica is a nonpartisan political organization that encourages informed and active participation in government. We do not endorse either political parties or candidates running for office, but we do seek to influence public policy through education and advocacy. Leagues at all levels have been advocates for meaningful police reform legislation. The League of Women Voters of the United States last summer joined a letter with over 400 civil rights organizations to call on Congress to implement needed policing reforms and urge congressional leadership to swiftly rectify the legacy of white supremacy and black racism that is an anti-black racism that has led to police violence against black people and other people of color across our country. The League of Women Voters of California um, endorsed Senate Bill 1421, SB 1421 of the 2017 to 2018 legislative year, 
which requires disclosure of records and information related to certain high profile categories of officer misconduct, such as officer involved shootings, certain uses of force, sustained findings of sexual assault, and sustained findings of certain types of dishonesty. And in the same legislative, legislative year, the California legislature passed and the governor signed into law Assembly Bill 748, which requires release of video and audio recordings of critical incidents. These two laws significantly expanded public access to police misconduct records under the California Public Rec Records Act and can strengthen public trust in law enforcement by improving transparency and accountability if they are implement, implemented properly. The role of the criminal justice system is to prevent crime and promote public safety. And current research indicates that successful systems focus on pretrial diversion, rehabilitation, and preventing recidivism. Some communities experience excessive force and surveillance by the police. And in some communities, people waste away in prison serving extreme sentences. The current criminal justice system needs reform to ensure its constitutionality and cost effectiveness. Community participation is essential. The most effective criminal justice reforms consider the safety and well being of both peace officers and the communities that they serve, especially people most impacted. We need to consider the humanity of people who are impacted by our current criminal justice system. And we need to examine the support that our public safety officers and personnel require, such as adequate training, clear performance standards, mental health services, and other resources. We appreciate the City of Santa Monica's efforts to heal and protect our community by creating the Public Safety Reform and Oversight Commission. The League believes that policing practices should be established by law enforcement with input from the communities that they serve. Community participation is crucial in the development of policing policy. The League supports police accountability via independent citizen oversight of law enforcement and publicly available data on officer conduct. Transparency and accountability are integral to maintaining the public's faith in the legitimacy of law enforcement. A breakdown in either transparency or accountability of law enforcement endangers public safety and makes it harder for peace officers to do their jobs. So Santa Monica's Public Safety Reform and Oversight Commission can perform several functions in our community, including providing independent oversight of local policing practices, which ensures transparency and accountability of law enforcement, supporting the dissemination of information to the public about policing policies, recruitment, procedures for complaint and commendation, and the rights and responsibilities of citizens and officers in interactions with each other, utilizing evidence-based research and supporting sufficient psychological services and counseling to meet stress-related needs of police personnel, advising on sufficient training to identify individuals with mental health conditions, disabilities, or substance abuse or addiction issues, so that officers will request support from the appropriate medical and mental health professionals with the goal of diverting those individuals into treatment instead of jail. It may also promote best practices regarding de-escalation anti-bias trainings, and even serve as an advisory body which utilizes evidence-based research and decision-making about law enforcement programs and policies, including scheduled periodic audits of program and policy effectiveness. As an example, there have been several recent changes to public safety-related laws in Santa Monica, where analysis and feedback from the PSROC may have been helpful in supporting a more collaborative rather than adversarial relationship among the Santa Monica Police Department and the community that they serve and belong to. The League of Women Voters of Santa Monica is concerned about the recent temporary agreement between the city and the Santa Monica Police Officers Association that places significant restrictions on the scope of work that the PSROC may engage in. And outside of the specific restrictions contained in the agreement and understanding that they are intended to be temporary, 
We're concerned about the lack of transparency surrounding the purpose and the process of the city agreeing to these limitations. The SMPOA's complaint regarding an alleged unfair practice charge was filed with the Public Employment Relations Board on July 23, 2021, and was noted as a closed session item with no reportable action taken at the August 24th City Council meeting. And the aforementioned agreement was approved by the City Council on August 24th, 2021. There are complex issues at play in employment-related complaints and their resolutions. But when it comes to the intersection of labor relations and progress in the area of public safety reform, additional factors are relevant to the discussion. It's important to consider how the perception of impediments to meaningful reform may result in actual impediments to meaningful reform. And given the public process uh, surrounding the establishment of the Public Safety Reform and Oversight Commission and its parameters, was the entire discussion appropriate for closed session or would it have been more appropriate for these changes, even the temporary changes, to be discussed or at the very least disclosed in open session since the commission was established publicly as well as, uh, as were its parameters? The council established them and voted on them in open session. We support the Santa Monica, Santa Monica's public safety officers in their desire for their department to be a model, the kind of meaningful reform that can be achieved through community collaboration. Community collaboration requires clear and transparent communication among the community. We support the Public Safety Reform and Oversight Commission's goal to promote the best practices in community-oriented policing for fair treatment, safety, and the well-being of all in partnership with the Santa Monica Police Department, as well as the goal of providing a body to work with SMPD and experts to develop, recommend, and help implement proposed reforms for handling complaints regarding SMPD conduct including proposed reforms for the intake, review, and investigation of, and oversight of disciplinary decisions and policies relating to such complaints. And we look forward to look, working with the Public Safety Reform and Oversight Commission to realize a Santa Monica that's safe for all. Thank you. Thank you for those uh, comments. Uh, we appreciate them. Um, I'm going to open it up to commissioners for uh, to see if you have a few questions uh, for the League of Women Voters uh, before we move to the next item. Anyone have uh, questions? Uh, Commissioner Debramont. I don't know if it's really a question for the League of Women Voters. First of all, um, thank you so much for your thoughts. Very well said. Um, but I, I guess I would have a question that would if I may, Chair, um, based on what we just heard, that might apply more to uh, our city attorney. Okay, well, um, I'm gonna try to follow the rules of sticking to the agenda items. So for now, it should be, this 10 minute period at most is just gonna be for Q&A relating to what was just said. So if it's not directed, we're going to move to the next two agenda items, but I'm sure we'll get to your topic sometime tonight. So, Okay, my, my, my only issue is that there, there was an, it was brought up an issue of uh, the closed session, and I may be wrong, and I don't want what I'm about to be said to be an endorsement of the agreement, but I believe the city council handles all pending litigation in closed session. That's the only point or question I have. But I don't necessarily think that's for the legal win voters. Thank you so much, Natalia. Any other uh, questions, uh, Commissioner Miller? Yes, thank and you then very Commissioner much, Commissioner Cruz. If that was a hand, okay. Go ahead, thank Commissioner you. Miller. Thank you very much, Natalia. I appreciate the work of the legal women voters. Um, I also um, appreciated your mention of pre-trial intervention, and I'm pleased to say that part of what I think this commission has learned um, in recent weeks is that our city is pretty strong on that and takes takes that uh, takes that role um, uh, seriously and quite compassionately. Um, so thank you for mentioning it. Um, you um, 
You mentioned meaningful police reform and needed police reform. You also go on at length to give a number of characteristics of what needed and meaningful police reform would be, and I appreciate that. Could you boil it down for us, though, to maybe a couple clear indications in your experience or in the league's view of what makes for the difference between meaningful police reform and, let's just say, a desire to appear to be engaging in police reform? That's a great question. So to boil it down, I would say there have to be results. We have to be able to see measurable, real changes. So are as many people getting stopped? Are fewer people getting stopped? How many folks are going into that pretrial diversion? What alternative methods are being used? Basically, do the numbers and the data support that it is, in fact, real meaningful reform? It's based on evidence and data. And in your work late in recent years, particularly as this has heated up in the consciousness of cities across America, have you noted some great examples of meaningful police reform? And have you noted some examples of where it seemed to be more an attempt at appearance than real progressive change? That's my last question. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, I don't have any examples I can immediately pull from, but I am participating on the League of Women Voters of California's statewide criminal justice reform committee. So I'd be happy to check with them and see what efforts have been made and what's been successful and share that and follow up with Commissioner Brown and forward that to the commission. That would be terrific. Commissioner Cruz. No, he's passing. Okay. All right. I don't see any other hands up for questions. And so thank you very much, Ms. Zanitska. And we really appreciate your remarks and your showing up and your support for our commission. Now I'd like to move to 3B, which is for members of the Black Agenda. I was expecting either Barry Snell or Leslie, I'm sorry, Erica Leslie, if they're on, now would be a good time to turn your camera on. Yeah, Erica is with us. Okay. Erica, are you ready to go? If so, please go ahead and start for up to 20 minutes or as little or as long, any sub-part of that you wish. Good evening. I'm unable to turn on my camera. My apologies. Good evening, commissioners. Thank you for your work. Thank you for your time and your contribution to our city and your dedication. I want to start off first off by a quote by James Baldwin, just to put in light the vision. Well, if one really wishes to know how justice is administered in a country, one does not question the policemen, the lawyers, the judges, or the protected members of the middle class. One goes to the unprotected, those precisely who need the law's protection most, and listens to their testimony. Ask any Mexican, any Puerto Rican, any black man, any poor person, ask the wretched how they fare in the halls of justice, and then you will know, not whether or not the country is just, but whether or not it has any love for justice or any concept of it. It is certain in any case that ignorance allied with power is the most ferocious enemy justice can have. James Baldwin. This is why this commission here is of great importance to our city. We appointed these leaders here sitting on this commission to do a job, to do a police oversight safety commission, to look over and help the police align with what they couldn't do within their own police in the own police stations. I'm asking that 
people reconsider what they've done to handcuff this commission. The Black Agenda supports this committee commission here. We appreciate their work, their dedication. They need to be uncuffed. We need certain things to be looked at in light, in a humanitarian way. We need policies that will address the issues of the disabled and mentally incapacitated, that when they are policed, they're policed with humanity. We need repair of our community trust after May 31st for our youth and for our community members. We need our officers that are out of place and out of alignment with what Santa Monica says is their mission to be either removed from duty or replaced to office duty. We need notifications of public safety alerts when things are actively happening in our city so that people know to keep themselves out of harm's way and not for things to be swept under the rug. That is just a few of the things that we need in this city. Thank you for your time and thank you for the invite. Uh, thank you, no problem. Uh, is, uh, is Barry Snell gonna join us tonight or, or do you know or not? I'm not sure. Okay, if not, then I'll, uh, thank you for your comments. And uh, if you would, uh, perhaps there will be a, a question or two from uh, the commissioners. So I'll ask uh, commissioners, any questions for Ms. Leslie? That uh, Commissioner Miller, I go ahead. It. I appreciated the quote by James Baldwin very much. And I would just add as he might wish to, the plight of uh, LGBTQ plus people, transgender people, and particularly transgender people of color who have been experiencing enormous uh, difficulties with law. Thank you. Okay, um, I had a question, um, Ms. Leslie, you mentioned uh, public safety alerts uh, should be sent to everyone. Um, is it your understanding that public safety alerts get made to, to some portions of the community, but not all, is that, uh, is that what you're suggesting there? Yes, this is recently a Sunday, there was a shooting in the city in the Pico neighborhood and people weren't aware of where to keep themselves out of harm's way. Yeah. Which areas of the city to avoid? Thank you. Uh, any other questions of Ms. Leslie before we move to the next agenda item? Okay, I'm not seeing any. So I will now, uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Leslie, for uh, for speaking on behalf of the Black Agenda, we appreciate your presence and your support, and we will um, uh, be open uh, in the future uh, any time you want to speak. I think I have one one other question from Commissioner Centeno. So hold on one second. Yes, Commissioner Centeno. I, I just have a a question to Erica. Um, she is aware that if she puts her name, I think it's through the emergency. Uh, the emergency office, uh, um, the EOC, that she would be able to get public safety alerts on her phone. Is she aware of that? Because she mentioned she'd like to yes. get that. Well, thank you, Commissioner. Um, however, there are members of the public of our community that have their numbers and names through there, and they did not receive any such type alert. Mm, okay. They might want to just call the EOC and verify that they have the right information. Because I, I know I get them, but it, that's something they could follow up on. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, but there was more than one account that I could attest to that people okay. were not getting those alerts. Okay. Um, I'm not seeing any other uh, commissioners with their hands raised. So again, uh, thank you, Ms. Leslie. I appreciate your, uh, your appearance and your, your comments. Um, I'm now going to move to uh, 3C, and we have the um, Santa Monica Coalition for Police Reform. And uh, Ms. Wittig, um, are you going to have multiple persons, or 
just you or yes yes we will and uh my job this evening is to introduce them uh first i would like to introduce myself for those uh who may be new to the commission uh, my name is michelle wittig i'm a 50-year resident of santa monica and a retired professor of experimental psychology at california state university northridge the uh, Coalition for Police Reform is a grassroots group, and we have consistently had 12 to 14 members. 40% uh, typically are African American. Tonight we have four speakers, and my job is to introduce them, and then if any of them experience technical difficulties or are unable to log on, I can fill in for them. Okay, so and I'll just uh, remind you, I didn't get to say at the outset that you can have up to 20 minutes. Thank you, Susan. So yeah, great. Thank you. Every way you like. Okay. Yeah. We appreciate and respect uh, your time, and we are committed to using it wisely. Our four speakers are uh, Ms. Julie Alley, who is a member of the affiliate board of the ACLU Southern California. She's our point person for state legislation. Uh, our second speaker will be Ms. Audrey Linus, who is trained in the law and in social work. And thanks to Audrey, we were given physical meeting space for several years on the Unitarian Universalist Church of Santa Monica campus for our meetings before COVID. Our third speaker is Ms. Donna Brown. She is the founder and leader of Encouragement Project, whose goal is a balanced approach to justice. And our fourth speaker is Ms. Joanne Berlin, a CRJ, that's community, uh, I'm sorry, coalition, <laughs> Committee for Racial Justice, steering committee member, and she's an ordained minister. She has uh, been a leader in providing non-material support for complainants to uh, accompany them to their uh, meetings with the Santa Monica Police Department. And uh, she and others of our group have consistently monitored and spoken at RIPA board meetings. RIPA stands for Racial and Identity Profiling Board. So our first speaker is uh, Julie Alley, and if she has the microphone on, she can make her remarks. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I, I hope everybody can hear me, and I'll just start. Um, thank you very much, Commission, for um, uh, you know hosting us. Um, the Santa Monica Coalition for Police Reform was founded in October 2015. This was a direct result of a, a violation of civil rights of Justin Palmer, a black Santa Monica resident, by the SMPD. Faye, uh, Faye Wells, another black Santa Monica resident, was a victim of bias by proxy and over-policing by Santa Monica PD. Um, and both Justin Palmer and Faye Wells moved out of Santa Monica because they no longer felt safe living here. The coalition supported the coalition CPR supported the Justin Palmer family throughout the trial, attending it daily. Um, we also hoped to support uh, Faye Wells and did what we could, but she decided to move too. Um, so more about the the commission. I mean the coalition. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we. Uh, well, it's hard for me to read my stuff here. We do, as, as Michelle said, we file complaints or we attend um, people who want to have, have somebody with them when they file a complaint against the police. I've done that myself and so has Joanne um, and probably others. Um, we also you know, attend trials when needed too, to give emotional support. We monitor local police practices and statewide policy reform as does the league, so it's great. We have given oral and written testimonies, the Racial Identity Profiling Act Advisory Boards, RIPA, and, and uh, have traveled across the state to do that. Um, we meet quarterly with the police chief and city managers um, and, and have always been tried to maintain a, a dialogue with them. Um, we participate in campaigns to enact policing reform legislation. Um, we always tried it, striped and tell community stories and actually made a video doing just that. The um, CPR, um, let's see, has testified a, a, a before the Human Rights Commission and other uh, 
bodies of state bodies. We also are city bodies too. We also have attended the um, the um, sheriff, or some of us have attended the sheriff uh, um, blanking. <laughs> um, the uh, Accountability Commission and, and the LAPD Commission too. So, and I think that's about it, unless Michelle can think of anything else. And thank you for your time. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank Our next you. speaker is uh, Ms. Audrey Linus. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Yeah, okay. The following is CPR's statement regarding the Police Officers Association, POA, petition for PSROC membership. At its core, civilian oversight can be broadly defined as the independent, external, and ongoing review of a law enforcement agency and its operations by individuals outside of the law enforcement agency being overseen. This quote is from 2021 reports by the Department of Justice Office of Community Oriented Policing Services. The city established the PSRO Commission in part to enhance community engagement with and trust in SMPD. Such commissions are, by definition, staffed by civilians who bring a neutral, objective, and impartial lens to the task of oversight. The POA objects to being excluded from membership on the commission. However, as the Nation National Association for Civilian Oversight of Law Enforcement, or NACOL, elucidates, civilian oversight is a process that involves the active participation by persons who are not sworn law enforcement. Do the POA and SMPD officers honestly contend that they can be impartial in assessing their own performance? Although the POA alleges that it supports reform, CPR is unaware that POA has ever advocated for reform until the city, as a result of the events of May 31st, established the Public Safety Advisory Committee. Two members of SMPD, including the president of the POA, were appointed to the advisory committee and given the opportunity to represent SMPD and express their opinions. Several CPR members who watched all of the advisory committee meetings independently and uniformly concluded that the officers' contribute contributions served largely to create roadblocks to change. Why would their service on the PSRO Commission be any different? POA reports that it wants the opportunity to lead reform, give our perspective, get there together, collaborate, and be represented. Disallowing law enforcement from overseeing itself through the Commission does not preclude it from doing so internally, from making a comment at City Council meetings, from attending commission meetings to offer their perspective, and indeed the chief has been invited to do so, or from submitting data and reports to the commission. The OIR group's after action report critically opined that heretofore, Santa Monica residents have accorded SMPD great deference in its operations. In other words, SMPD has had all the power. One of OIR's suggestions was for the city to enhance community involvement in assessing SMPD policy and practices. Creating a civilian oversight agency responds to this suggestion. Staffing it with police officers does not. According to NACOL, cities typically create civilian oversight commissions as a reactive measure when, owing to perceived police misconduct, residents have lost confidence in or developed mistrust for its law enforcement agency. The interim city manager and SMPD appear to have done a poor job in self-assessment. First, in awarding SMPD an A grade for its performance on May 31st, and then in creating an after action report, which apparently was so incompetently prepared that it was suppressed by the interim city manager until its existence was disclosed by the media. Is it any wonder Santa Monica residents lost trust in SMPD? NACOL asserts that one of the most important defining concepts of civilian oversight and a feature key to effective police oversight is independence. Independence is defined by NACOL as the absence of real or perceived influence from law enforcement, political actors, 
or special interests looking to affect the operations of the civilian oversight agency. Such prohibited political influence by law enforcement includes the opportunity to appoint or veto the appointment of commission members. NACOL informs us that the oversight body must be separate from all groups in order to garner trust by being unbiased. CPR believes that only independent civilian oversight, free of law enforcement membership or influence upon membership decisions can help SMPD rebuild trust with the community. Thank you. Great. Our Thank next you. speaker just, is uh, Ms. Donna Brown. Um, I'm can not I sure just she... make a note that I say Barry Snell joined us and after, after coalition finishes, we'll get back to uh, Barry. So uh, please continue, uh, Ms. Wittig. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, yes, my screen shows 25 uh, boxes, but I know there are 35 people in the room. So I'm not sure if uh, Ms. Brown is actually in the room. Adana, yes, I am. Are you I'm here. Oh, great. Thank you. Thanks. Go ahead, please. Uh -huh. Hello, council members. I am Donna, and I'm a long-term resident of the city of Santa Monica. So I'm here speaking this evening on behalf of safety, wellness, and fair treatment. First of all, I do respect the police officers in the city of Santa Monica. And um, now the responsibility for the Public Safety Reform Oversight, Oversight Commission, we would like to continue to enact as originally envisioned to increase police transparency, enforce accountability around best practice and provide civilian oversight and the resources needed for the commissions to succeed. And that's it. Thank you so much for having me here this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Uh, our final speaker is uh, Ms. Joanne Berlin. Uh, good evening. I, I can't seem to, uh, freeze my picture, but that's fine. <laughs> I think you can hear me. Yes, um, we can hear you. Very good, very good. Okay, I'm just going to, um, I guess I have about five minutes maybe. Don't know that I will take that long, but I'm just going to go back over a few things that um, maybe I want to, to stress. Uh, <clears throat> and, and one of them is in terms of um, the, um, the history that Julie mentioned, um, we, that was in the early years of the Coalition for Police Reform that we had a couple of cases that were kind of uh, very widely um, publicized in the community. Um, she mentioned the, the Dustin Palmer case and that was a case that had to be brought into in the federal court on a civil rights basis. Um, it's a case that had to do with racial profiling and um, use of excessive force. Um, and uh, um, I guess it's commonly understood by a lot of folks that you can't really win any case on racial profiling. You have to try to prove what's in the mind of someone uh, to say they racially profiled. So that's kind of a non-starter, I'm afraid, in the law. So that's why the Justin Palmer case, and the Justin Palmer was granted a million dollars uh, in that lawsuit for the use of excessive force by police. Um, so we, we learned a lot by sitting through that trial every day and listening to um, all of the details um, that came up there. And then in, in the Faye Wells case, it was, as um, I believe Julie mentioned, um, racial uh, profiling by uh, proxy. It was a neighbor that called and, and saw Faye, who was black, and uh, with a uh, Latino um, person trying to help her, uh, a locksmith, help her get into her apartment because she um, <laughs> didn't have her keys with her. And and the police came out with dogs and guns and um, she was, as Julie said, so terrorized that she had to, uh, felt she had to move 
out of the city. They both did. They're both Palmers. And uh, Faye Wells moved out of the city. But partly, the Palmers, partly because they also felt that there was an ongoing kind of almost stalking going on by some of the people involved in that case that made them feel uncomfortable to stay in the Pico neighborhood. So um, we, we realized that um, in the beginning of, of CPR, one of the first things we did was to look at the policies. We were, uh, the police uh, gave us all of their current policies and we read through them and we noticed that um, relating to both of those two cases, there was nothing at the time, there was nothing, um, the word de-escalation was nowhere in the policies, not even on the use of force policy. That has been rectified. Um, Chief Seabrooks um, did that um, and after we kind of pointed out that there was no, no word of de-escalation anywhere in the policy. So that, that was good. That is now uh, written into the policies. But um, speaking for myself, for a moment, I, I, policies are certainly important, but I have come to see that they are not always followed. And so, uh, and we don't have any access when they're not followed to if there is any accountability brought to bear on police who don't follow them. Or if there is accountability, we don't have any um, sense of what, what that is, what is the nature of it. I happen to, uh, along with Michelle and Julie today, be on the uh, RIPA uh, subcommittee meeting on post training. You've got and about uh, two minutes left, just FYI. Okay, thanks. Please continue. Yes. Yeah. And so I, I just want to say that um, as CPR, we're very concerned about the um, the, the kind of training for, for new officers as well as the continuing training. And it was a bit disconcerting to, to have the uh, people from the State Department of Justice say that there is actually, um, there's 18 folks on the post board that decides what the training will be, what the nature of it is, um, or suggestions. They make suggestions as to the nature of it. There's no civil rights designated person on that board. There, uh, out of 18 people, there are 10 who are um, public safety officers. And there's no oversight to post. And there's no, nobody can say you're, you're leaving out this or you're ignoring that. So we, we really are concerned that this commission deal with meaningful training uh, in a number of respects. Also, we're concerned that this commission deal with the examination of the budget uh, because uh, in the wake of 531-20 um, uh, and the killing of George Floyd, there was talk about readjusting the budget and moving more funding into mental health. I don't believe that that has happened and so I think this commission to pay attention to that. We also, um, as Donna said, want uh, accountability when people try to present a complaint. We've been with people and, and heard from people who have tried to present a complaint and don't and have trouble getting past the front desk of, of the police department. And I think also we, we want the commission to have some input into the who the new police chief will be. If that's at all possible, I think that's very important that the commission at least be able to give their opinions as to what is wanted in such a person. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, uh, well, thank you to all of the speakers for Coalition for Police Reform. Now I'll ask the commissioners again if they have a, a few questions for Coalition of Police Reform. And then we'll circle back quickly to uh, Mr. Snell, who's waiting. Um, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Miller, please. Uh, thank you. I appreciate the Coalition for Police Reform and the way that you've been, the members have been looking after these issues uh, for, for some years. Um, I also appreciate the reference to the grade A from 531 and how that sort of set in motion, you know, um, such a um, credibility 
And, um, and, and it was extraordinary that at the same time that a number of our civic, uh, civic appointed and elected top leaders were promoting and uh, supporting the Obama initiative for cities relative to police reform, uh, those same individuals were standing by the, uh, the A grade. Uh, my one quick question is, uh, with regards to police officers serving on this, uh, this commission, um, coalition, correct me if I'm wrong, but does the coalition have an objection to former police officers serving on this commission? And I would just point out to date, I think we benefited greatly by uh, that being part of the profile. Thank you so much. I would just say that uh, we are not of one mind, but we are of a single purpose. So no, we, we don't have one uh, common answer to your question, but we do have and share the same purpose, and that is police reform, whatever form the community expresses as its wish. Uh, Commissioner Mota, please. Um, I would just like to say that I agree with, who was the lady that was speaking? Um, with the lady that was speaking, uh, I would have to agree with her in terms of like having a say in the budget, just because I know in the OIR report, it talks about how they, re they didn't disclose certain, um, certain transactions towards programs. And it would be good to know, like, where the money's being put because it's, you know, we need to know. Thank you. Okay, um, not seeing any more questions. So, uh, all of the uh, speakers, thank you very much for your appearance uh, here and your support of the commission and your thoughtful uh, comments. We very much appreciate it. Uh, now I'm going to just quickly uh, uh, go back to uh, Mr. Snell, who was part of Group 2 and the Black Agenda. And uh, uh, Mr. Snell, you've got about uh, five minutes of the Black Agenda's time uh, remaining. If uh, Hopefully that will be appropriate for you to make a few comments. Thank you so much. I don't think I'll need five minutes, but I also want to thank you for allowing, forgiving me for being somewhat late. Um, Yes, I'm here speaking on behalf of the Black Agenda. I'm, my name is Barry Snell. I'm a 20-year resident of Santa Monica, and I'm also uh, presently the current uh, board member for Downtown Santa Monica, president of the board. Um, I totally support uh, an independent oversight citizen commission on the police, or one that um, does not have a seat with someone that's a current police officer. I believe that this committee uh, needs to be independent. I support police actions, but I do believe that um, an oversight committee is strongly needed based on what happened in May 31st and also the events uh, that are happening along around our country about systemic racism, and particularly with our issue with respect to homelessness. And I think that plays into what I heard the last speaker talk about with respect to um, being part of the discussion about allocating funds to where it's needed. Um, as a president of the Downtown Santa Monica Board, I speak with a number of property owners that are having a difficult time with the homeless situation. And my concern is that a number of the homeless individuals are African-American and people of color. And I want, and their, their concern is that the police officers are not responsive. And my discussion with them and what I hear from a number of people is that the police officers aren't equipped to handle the response of our homeless situation, which I think plays right into um, our financial discussions with respect to uh, how we fund our police department. And I think an oversight committee, a citizen oversight committee, would be a strong voice in allocating funds to those that are needed and utilizing the police officers for those services that are directly related to police officers. Um, and my last comment is that I, I do believe that since May 31st that we have we have seen, and I'm hearing from a number of residents, where we're not getting the kind of police response we need in certain circumstances. Um, and that's a concern of mine. 
I was in a meeting today with a couple of property owners that also live in Santa Monica. And one particular individual who lives north of Montana, who's also a property owner, said, you know, Barry, when I call a police officer on Montana on the 21st, they come pretty quickly. When I call a, per, per, a police officer on my property on the promenade, it's sometimes 40 to 45 minutes or they don't come at all. And this is something that is a real concern of mine from an individual who is a resident, but also a property owner in our town. And I think these are the kind of instances and things that we're seeing as residents, which, which weigh right into why we have need to have a citizen's oversight committee discussing and making sure that policies and decisions with respect to finances are going directly to where it's needed. So I'm a strong proponent of, of your oversight. I'm a strong proponent of making sure that the, the, the position of those commissioners on this oversight committee are independent residents from our town with diverse backgrounds. And so I um, hopefully those comments and that kind of discussion as we go forward will be um, will be helpful to you as a committee and helpful to your discussion with uh, the police officers. And I do understand the current uh, situation with the lawsuit. So that's my only comments. And um, hopefully if anything I else can do from my position, I'd be glad to support it. Uh, thank you. And if you could just hold for uh, a second to see if there's uh, any uh, questions or follow up from the commissioners. Uh, commissioners, any, any follow up questions? Okay. I'm not seeing any. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you for your support and for your showing up and, and thank uh, you. being supportive of the commission. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Uh, uh, as I said, community listening session uh, uh, for this meeting, uh, I wanna uh, you know, tell everyone on the, on the call and, and all the commissioners that you know, we wanna hear from a variety of groups uh, and uh, and uh, make sure we get uh, coverage. Uh, I mean, I think it'd be very good if we can hear from uh, some of the business owners. Uh, it would be good if we could hear more from uh, Latino community and, and groups, uh, from young people, uh, and from other other segments of our, our community. So this is not the only time we're gonna uh, do this, uh, and we'll uh, expect to have more of these. All right, uh, Ms. Parson, can you uh, read the next agenda item, which is 3D? Indeed. 3D, drafting session for written report and recommendations to city council regarding OIR group report, SMPD response, and commission's intended work plan. Discussion of SMPD July 29, 2021 information item an SMPD response to OIR group report on May 31, 2020 events. Great, thank you. Um, all right, I'm gonna start off with uh, a chair report here. I, it was included in the agenda uh, package. And um, <clears throat> uh, what this uh, agenda item is, is a continuation of our work to prepare a report to the city council that reflects our um, review of the information that's come out concerning May 31st. Uh, and there's, uh, in addition to the public record, there's the OIR group report, and there's the SMPD response to the OIR group report. And um, in my view, what we're preparing is a, re a report that reflects what we think is important and significant about um, these events uh, as reflected in the report of uh, the documents uh, and what we plan to do uh, as far as our own work plan about the issues that we identify that are important. And while we're at it, to the extent we have immediate recommendations, our expectation and intent would be to make those recommendations in this report as well. Now, due to the Brown Act, and the need, which I support, of being transparent and doing our business in public, um, we're trying to figure out how do we draft a report in public. And towards that end, I've been having uh, uh, committee meetings weekly, and um, 
uh, inviting all the commissioners to attend. They're publicly noticed, agendized, Brown Act compliant, uh, where we've been asking each commissioner to contribute their thoughts to what should be in the report. And so I know that some of our commissioners haven't had a full opportunity to weigh in on that. Um, and what I would, especially our new commissioners, first day, so you're excused from the homework. Um, but uh, I would uh, like to urge you all to uh, continue to read the report and continue to add to what will become a draft as I get more information from community members who come to our meetings and from commissioners, I'll start to put it in a draft. And at some point, we'll have a discussion on a draft report to City Council, uh, which we will uh, uh, vote on. Uh, so let me, uh, you all, I assume, always read uh, the agenda and the packet before the meetings. But just for the benefit of the public and as a reminder, let me tell you um, uh, some of the things that have been identified from our discussion so far. Um, we basically organized our public discussion by asking four questions. One was, what issues raised by the OIR group report are the most important for the commission to include? Second question was, what work should the commission do to address these important issues? Please be specific. A third was, <clears throat> how can the commission best obtain the cooperation of SMPD and its leaders as we pursue our work? And the fourth was what additional matters should be addressed in our report to City Council in September. And um, so I'm just going to go through and highlight a few that have um, made their way into our document recently, but all of these are already in the public uh, discussions. Uh, under what issues raised by the OIR group report are most important, one of the things we identified is um, leadership and that um, the OAR group report flagged substantial weaknesses in the overall leadership of SMPD that were manifest because of the urgent and emergency situations that unfolded on May 31st. And we're concerned that these leadership challenges persist within the department and further work needs to be done. <clears throat> Another category that's um, evolved uh, in our uh, draft is false narrative. Uh, this issue was first flagged by uh, the first look by one of our committees at the OIR report. Under false narrative, there's concern that SMPD and other city officials have used evasive and untrue language when communicating to the public about matters of concern. That conduct has not been limited to the former leadership of SMPD, and we're concerned that the practice has continued to the present. In addition, uh, one thing that didn't make it into the written material for today uh, commissioners have expressed some concern about uh, new surveillance policies and practices that were implemented um, in part to remedy some of the intelligence failures or at least uh, uh, alleged intelligence failures from May 31. And so that will um, that 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 concern will make its way into our our list. <clears throat> now, under uh, question two, what work should the commission do to address these important issues. We've got a number of recommendations under body-worn uh, cameras, uh, which I, I won't, I'll, I'll let you read uh, those. We have a number of recommendations under accountability, which um, in addition to making recommendations to council, I think our accountability committee, which Commissioner Devermont is chairing, will continue its work um, on those questions. Under leadership recommendations, uh, what's appeared uh, new in our recent committee meetings are uh, that the commission, this commission, should be meaningfully included in the search for a new police chief. This commission should uh, provide a list of characteristic skills and experience to look for in the next police chief. The city manager should require the police chief, the new police chief, to develop a plan for positively interacting with the commission and collaborating on policy and other matters of public safety. The city council should insist that the contract with the new police chief contains goals for accountability of the department and its officers. And the city manager, the new city manager, should design performance goals 
for the new police chief that include measures for community engagement and cooperation uh, with the commission. Um, so that's just uh, sort of a bit of what's in the uh, attachment. And what I'd like to do now is uh, ask commissioners whether you have further things to contribute to uh, the work in progress draft um, and, uh, and any other suggestions relevant to this uh, project. Commissioner Miller. I have a comment, which is, that sounded darn good, Chairman. That, that, um, that all sounds very much like what we, what ought to be key elements of our work plan. And then um, just one quick comment, you mentioned um, alleged intelligence failures. I think that's pretty much now accepted fact of intelligence failures. But yes, I like, uh, I like the draft as you're describing it very much. I uh, particularly want to encourage um, uh, getting views of, of, of commissioners who have a different take or might, uh, might disagree with portions because I, I want to make sure we have a fair opportunity to air views. One example, for example, is I'm not sure we've got enough input on how uh, business owners uh, feel about the OIR group report. It might be interesting for us to solicit some more views on that um, <clears throat> uh, as well. Uh, so um, uh, we will have, uh, it, it's very difficult to draft uh, this report in public. So uh, we will, uh, but, but that's the way we need to do it. So we'll have a few additional sessions between now and uh, September, uh, I've got a due date of September 28th by my calculations. So uh, I would plan to have additional uh, special meetings where we invite the commissioners to um, uh, continue providing input. And um, if anyone wants to help me draft based on the input, uh, I welcome all, uh, all volunteers. I see Commissioner Devermont is as is volunteering, and I see Commissioner Mota moved, so I'm going to count her in as a drafter. Uh, um, all right. Any other comments on this agenda item? Uh, not Ms. Par uh, yes, uh, City Attorney Cardona. Just a note for your scheduling purposes that for the report to be submitted by the commission, um, if you want to do that prior to September 28th, you'll need to have a special meeting of the commission as a whole to vote on the final draft. Yes, this is a good, um, a good point to continue to remind our commissioners of, and that is that um, just like boards and nonprofits uh, and city councils, uh, they can't act as a body without actually voting and having a majority of the <clears throat> uh, members uh, vote in favor of it. So everything we do short of that is just preparation. And at some point we'll have a, um, we'll have, a, you know, we'll, we'll circulate a, a near final draft and, uh, and, and invite a vote. Uh, Commissioner Centeno. Uh, just a question, um, as drafts come out, first draft, second draft, or, or et cetera. Do we get notified that it's gonna be in a share file so it can be reviewed, you know, when we have an opportunity to review it and give comment and feedback? Uh, absolutely. Uh, the, the reason I hesitate is because I haven't figured out exactly how we're gonna do it, but everything that has been prepared so far has been shared uh, with the commissioners, uh, and if it needs to be, I see uh, city attorneys coming on again. If it needs to be shared with the whole world, I'm happy to do that as well. Um, oh, it's in other words, um, because um, sharing a document and having commissioners go into a shared document and comment poses Brown right. Act issues because it right. potentially could be a serial meeting. Yes. So you can certainly circulate the draft and have commissioners put their comments in place but then any discussion amongst the commission members of those comments should occur at a publicly agendized meeting. So at any one of your special meetings, everybody can come in and discuss each commissioner's proposals 
um, in terms of working on the draft, but that needs to be done at that meeting. Yes, let me just ask you a follow up on that, uh, City Attorney. Um, uh, so are you saying that um, we could have a process uh, where individual commissioners could put their comments into a document so long as that document with the comments makes its way uh, into our public meeting? So, so my suggestion, if you want to do something, is that Lisa Parsons could maintain a document um, and each of the commissioners could um, input their comments to Lisa Parsons. Lisa could then collect all of those comments and bring them for discussion amongst the commission as a whole at the meeting without those comments being shared with other commissioners prior to the meeting. Um, that would enable everybody to put their comments in, but the discussion of those comments wouldn't occur except in public at the meeting. I see. That still sounds a little bit cumbersome, but I'll follow up Agreed. with you. I apologize, but that's just the Brown Act requirements. Yes. Uh, yeah. Commissioner Centeno, yes. Yeah, and just a follow up uh, to the attorney. So, if I'm understanding this correctly, I get a copy, I review it, I have some comments, I, set, I submit the comments to Lisa, everybody else does the same. Um, and so, then that we have to have another commission meeting to to discuss or if we're going to discuss those comments is that my understanding? yes so there would have to be then an open meeting at which those comments are discussed among the various commissioners and decisions made as to you know which comments to accept which not to accept and work on the draft thank you uh, thanks commissioner debramont question for our city attorney could a draft be sent out Comments made sent to Lisa. Um, Lisa sends to the whole commission. Without discussion, newer drafts are made based on those comments. And can those newer drafts based on the comments be sent out if there's no discussion? Um, the problem is that someone in that chain would, well, the short answer is, depending on how it is done, that's pro probably like po probably possible. So for example, Let's say a draft is prepared, six commissioners have comments, they send those to Lisa. Lisa, without indicating whose comments are whose, prepares a draft that is now the updated draft with everybody's comments. There may be conflicting comments in there. Um, that new draft could then be circulated, but any discussion amongst the commissioners or decisions regarding how to implement those comments would have to be at a public meeting. Would it be possible to do if the names of who gives the comments was distributed? and a new draft without discussion was then made based on those comments and sent out for more comments. As long as, my point is there's never a gathering to discuss, it's just reactionary, it, or is that not okay? It's, I believe that's probably a gray area. I think yeah. that that is probably okay, as long as no one knows whose comments or whose, and there's no discussion amongst the commissioners as to those comments, it's simply basically, repetitive drafting individually um, with then any end of any discussion and decisions on that made at the public meeting that occurs after the however many iterative draft is completed. Yeah. But it would require go ahead. I'm sorry, but it would require the names to be left out and I think Correct. I think you're saying it's kind of a it's kind of ambiguous as to its legality. Yes. I, I, all right. I, probably, I don't want to push any barriers. Yeah, I don't want to belabor this too much, but I got just one last variation I, I thought of. Uh, so, uh, city attorney, we would follow your process to collect comments by Lisa, but maybe I have a special meeting for the sole purpose of making all of that public and distributing it to the commissioners. And then that's a five minute meeting. And then we, yes. right, and then we give some time for people to review it and then hold the, the substantive meeting where people can interact. Yes, that, that would work because then the public is made aware of all of the comments of the commissioners at that public meeting and then you go from there. That would work as well. Got it. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Ms. Parson, uh, or any other comments from commissioners before we get public input on this agenda item? My my only comment is I, I like your second uh, recommendation or, or thought. Yeah. Okay. That's why you're the chair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, uh, happy to do it. And uh, uh, 
So seeing no further commissioner comments, Ms. Parson, are there any uh, members of the public that wish to comment on this agenda item? You're on mute. I'm not seeing any. Okay. All right, um, good. Or it's, I mean, we're always open to public comment. I mean, when I say good, it's like, okay, we're gonna move to the next agenda item. All right, um, the next agenda item is uh, staff uh, administrative items. And we have items A through H. And what I'd like to do is uh, just take them in order and stop after each one, Ms. Parson, uh, to take some follow-up questions from commissioners and potential uh, suggestions. Um, so can you just start with 6A and... Uh, uh, yes, 6A, which I am going to defer to the city attorney to, um, I guess, and also the chief to respond to this one. Well, let's read it first so everybody knows what it is. Yep, I'm just giving them the heads up that they might be speaking soon. 6A, receive and file status update or staff report on the status of information requested by regarding complaints, discipline, it matters. This item is pending since June 16th, 2021. Uh, do you have a report, or are you asking uh, for uh, Mr. Cardona to weigh in? I, can, I, I can do not have in. a report. Okay. So the Jesus. list that you provided, um, I believe, and Ms. Parsons, can you confirm, but we provided, uh, we had provided, one of the requests was for the SB 1421 materials that we have previously provided. Um, and we provided a directory that was a shared directory that I believe Ms. Parsons has made available that contains the materials that we produced to the district attorney's office. They had submitted a public records request requesting all of those materials, I believe, for the last 10 years. Um, so we compiled that um, and that's what we've provided to you. So I think that everybody now has access to those public records. And Lisa, is that right that the shared drive is out there? That's correct. Were added um, our, our public record website. staff is is looking to to see if we identify any other materials. We received a large number of requests for 1421 materials, so we are seeing if we have other materials that beyond those that fit within the DA's 10-year time period. Um, and if to the extent we have those, um, which I believe we do have some, once those get compiled into a similar share drive, we'll transfer it over to Lisa and make it available to everybody. Okay. Um, the balance of the materials, I think. Um, Chief Seabrook and her staff were in the process of gathering. So there's still some documents that haven't been provided, I take it. I don't know what has or has not, so I'll defer to Chief Seabrook on that. Good evening, everyone. Yes, there's a small number of documents that we wanted to look at, and I wanted to, I received them and then um, sent them back for some additional validation to be sure we were being fully responsive to the request. So we will have that uh, forthwith uh, in anticipation of your, well, I'm not sure if it's your next ad hoc, but within the coming week, let me just say it that way. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, any further uh, questions or comments on this item? Uh, yes, Commissioner Debremont. Uh, I would just like to thank the city attorney and the chief for the hard work that they've put in, and obviously Lisa, Ms. Parson, for the hard work that they've been put in in compiling this information and making it available. Thank you. And I would like to say, I, I agree. Thank you for getting that uh, material to us. Uh, and I, I wanna say to the accountability uh, committee uh, and looking at you, uh, Commissioner Debermont, uh, I assume that you all will take that information up and uh, continue holding meetings, which will now be publicly agendized and notice um, and working towards your report that's probably due at the end of October. Uh, oh yes, uh, the records are voluminous to say the least. Uh, I have been going through them. Uh, and yes, we will uh, we'll be planning to hold meetings. Okay. I'm gonna leave it at that. Yes. Good. Uh, okay, Ms. Parson, can you uh, call 6B and then give us a report? Again, 6B, receive and file report on commission's August 12th request to city manager or city attorney to provide information on the staff hiring inspector general 
to support and work with the direction of the Commission, including selection process, conflicts of interest process, and key contractual terms. Um, I will be responding to this, um, and then we can, I do have some questions, but I'll give the overview. So, um, the Inspector General contract has been submitted for signatures as of uh, last week. The selection process was supposed to publicly facing request for proposals, which was open for a minimum of 45 days. Nine firms registered to that's something you can do when it's posted, but only the OL submitted a full proposal. The submittal was re evaluated by staff. For each submittal for a fee, there's a group of, group of staff, three to five, that usually and evaluate to score the submission, um, completion, et cetera, quality. Um, that was evaluated by staff from the city manager's office, the police department, the city manager's office, and our finance department. Uh, regarding this process and key contractual terms, if there's specific questions you have. Uh, you're breaking up a little bit. I don't know if it's me or. I'll turn the you. camera off. Does this make it better? Uh, I can hear you now, yes. Okay. You were saying something. About, you were, no, just the end, you were saying something about regarding conflicts. No, I didn't hear the rest. Yeah, if there are questions around the conflicts of interest process or key contractual terms, um, if there's something specific, I can try to answer that. Um, the conflict of interest process is, is simply, you know, this contractor can't be doing work for more than one entity in the city at once, things like that, um, basic standard. Well, work okay. On the, the, the city on other projects has been completed. So I guess that is the, the question. What, 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 um, what is the process of, of evaluating uh, the uh, the proposed or the I guess it now seem to be Inspector General for potential conflicts? And I think you just at least partially answered that that there's a some sort of standard review. Is that what you said? That's correct. Uh, uh, at the same level for the city. See that they're not working for another entity in the city at the same time. That's right. Okay. Uh, commissioners, any other questions on this item? Commissioner Miller. So um, obviously OIR is an organization, not a person. So will it be a team approach to, to um, fulfilling the role or will there be one individual designated from the organization? The lead of the agency, Michael Janaco, will perform the, 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 sorry, the highest proportion of the work, but the entire team is available based on subject matter expertise to um, fill in if necessary. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Parson, do you want to uh, move to the next agenda, item 6C, and uh, call that out uh, and then give us the report? Item 6C, receive and file a report on Commission's August 12th request to City Manager to provide the Commission with regular status updates on the search for a new police chief. Uh, I confirmed with the Director of HR yesterday that a conditional offer has been made for a new police chief. Uh, the Chair did participate in the interview panel that the candidate was in. No additional details can be provided until after the um, negotiation process is complete and the background check is complete on the um, candidate. Okay, thank you. Uh, commissioners, any questions on this item? Yes, I have, I, I have one. Um, is, there a, is there like a, um, a timeline on the, on the response for that? You mean how long mm -hmm. from the conditional offer to coming yeah, aboard? Yeah, how long it stands and like a background is done? Uh, it's typically two to three weeks to complete that. Okay. Okay, uh, Ms. Parson, you want to move to 6D? I do. Item 6D, receive and file status update or staff report on the status of recommendations from the Public Safety Reform Advisory Committee and provide direction to staff on next steps. I'm just going to pull up a document because there's several to refer to. All right, uh, beginning with first recommendation 
create a big yeah. organization. Okay, you're not, uh, let me just ask you uh, as you get started here, is this a document you're gonna share with us at some point? Uh, I'm happy to share it with you. It's a reference document for me because there's a lot to update on, but I'm happy to send it. Okay. Um, I'm just thinking of the timing because if it's lengthy, maybe you can give us a summary and then send it around to the commissioners and we can attach it uh, as, an, uh, as an attachment for our next meeting. I'm so can you just give us a high-level summary? Sure. I'm happy to do that. Um, of the primary recommendations, um, I will go very quickly. The use of force policies were revised January 12th, 2021. Um, I will include a link to the updated policies in the document. Um, 311 is something that was recommended. 311 has been established. Um, there was a recommendation to explore third party partnerships to implement crisis intervention teams, similar to the Eugene, Oregon Cahoots program. That partnership with, department of, with the LA County Department of Mental Health is in development. And that partnership does follow the CAHOOTS model. Um, that those the vans that will respond to certain call types should be on the streets of Santa Monica this fall. The neighborhood resource officers were increased from four to eight. Those officers have been hired and have been working. Uh, I need to confirm with the Santa Monica Police Department that the um, Department of Mental Health resource that works with the Homeless Liaison Program has been extended to 24-7 service. I have not confirmed that as of yet. And then steps in the budget process um, to achieve more balanced investment of city resources is uh, to be determined there were no changes made in that regard in the, G I'm sorry, in the recent budget beyond the allocation to uh, fund training for this commission and fund the inspector general. Thanks for those highlights. Wasn't one of the recommendations to form some sort of commission? That was the first one I was starting oh. to say. Okay. Correct. Check it off the list. Good. Um, any questions for Ms. Parson on that one, uh, knowing that we're going to get the written document? Uh, Ms. Uh, You're on mute. I think I'm, I'm sorry, are you calling Miller? Yes. Commissioner Miller. Yeah, I have two questions, uh, uh, just some points of substance. If this is not in order right now, please please let me know. Um, on the CAHOOTS uh, type program and the reference to vehicles hitting the streets in Santa Monica uh, by this fall, can you, um, do you know how many vehicles and, uh, yeah, how many vehicles and what um, configuration of personnel? I do. So there will be um, four staff that are behavioral health specialists. Um, the teams will be comprised of traditional substance abuse counselors, behavioral health interventionists, one person with lived experience, so someone formerly experiencing homelessness or substance abuse, et cetera, and a, an additional practitioner. They will be um, dispatched in a van that will be housed at a decommissioned fire station. Um, right now, the final details are being developed as to the means of dispatching them. The goal is to develop a, a sort of a trench of calls that the van can simply be directly dispatched to respond to. Another use of the van may be that the fire department, upon providing medical clearance of someone experiencing a challenge in the community, could then dispatch the van to connect that person with services, transport them to facilities, et cetera. So it's one van, but it's 24 one. hours. Okay, one van, four personnel, 24 hours. Right, three teams will be servicing, will be working on the van to keep it at 24 hours second. Is about what Eugene is doing uh, currently. And on um, on the reference to the um, a new policy on use of force, um, could you just recap? Um, is that principally related to reminding officers of the existing policy? Is that principal policy change or is there more to the new policy in terms of uh, change? I would like to defer to Chief Seabrooks to answer that, if she's still with us. I am, and could you repeat the question that, um, a that gave rise, or the circumstance that gave rise to the commissioner's question? Yes, thank you, Chief. Um, regarding the new policy on the force, is the primary um, uh, qualities of the new policy um, 
uh, a call for greater um, reinforcement of the policy with officers, greater frequency with which the topic is brought up at roll calls, et cetera, or are there other um, substantive changes to the policy? I think it's a, a bit of both. Um, there are some, some changes uh, as it relates to some new definitional language. Um, and then we wanted to make sure that we had captured uh, the fact that um, pointing a weapon at a person specifically clearly is a use of force. And we want to be sure that the appropriate reporting and data capture and accountability mechanisms were put in place for that as well. Uh, so there, there uh, is the reporting obligations uh, that are attached to this new information. Uh, so that is the substantive component. And then because we conduct uh, routine um, trainings on this, it's part of that as well. Thank you, Chief. Uh, yes, Commissioner Ramirez. Yeah, on the uh, addition of the neighborhood resource officers, is that hired from within that have moved into that position or are these new hires to the department? The neighborhood, the additional neighborhood, sorry, the additional neighborhood resource officers, um, they are officers who are already in uh, the assigned, in the organization. Uh, we typically do not bring new hires uh, on and then put them in a, what is called a special assignment until they have de demonstrated competency at the basic patrol functions. So while we move them in, uh, newly hired police officers replace them in, within the patrol uh, function uh, and the functional division. Thank you very much, that's what I was hoping. You're welcome. Commissioner Centeno. Uh, Chief, is these new positions, even though they're not being filled with new officers, are they, are they new positions on the department? In other words, are there new officers being hired? So your allocation of, of officers is increased by four? No. Okay, so it's, it's being absorbed into the existing officer population? Yes. Okay. Okay, uh, no further questions uh, on, on this topic for now, although we are gonna get the, uh, the full uh, written version of this. So it'll, it'll come back on the next, uh, next meeting. Uh, Ms. Parson, can you go to 6E? Yeah. 6E, receive and file status update or staff proposal on structuring community engagement and community input into the commission's work and provide direction to staff on next steps. On this, I do not have a full update for you at this point. I'm on, I believe there's a working group that's gonna focus on the um, community resilience. And re well, that's not the right word. Commissioner Scott's working on it. We have a, um, an ad hoc uh, committee on community engagement. We have commissioners Cruz and Ramon uh, on that uh, committee. Um, and so, uh, It'd be great if you could work with that committee yeah, to that's continue what to evolve this item. Yep, that's what I'm proposing to connect with them and get a, get a sense of where uh, the commissioners would like to begin that community engagement process. Um, and I and also I also provided support towards community volunteers. Should the commission decide they would like city the city to publicize those opportunities, I'm able to facilitate that for you. Okay. Uh, any uh, commissioners, any questions? Okay, I don't see any. Uh, why don't you, uh, Ms. Parson, go on to the next item? Great. Receive and file status update or staff report on proposed process for the commission to evaluate issues relating to SMPD interaction with the unhoused population and provide direction to staff on next steps. This is another issue which I would like to work with one of the committees to develop the approach. There are a number of developments happening in this, this sphere right now. The um, behavioral health band project that I met, mentioned is one. There is a crisis response unit that is also being staffed up right now out of the fire department and a few other initiatives. So I would like to provide a detailed briefing to either the full commission or a working group or an ad hoc group that would focus on that 
to get a sense of where you might want to focus those efforts. There will be a large number of departments that will be involved in um, developing a process for really evaluating those activities. Great, so I have a, a couple of uh, comments uh, on that. Uh, one is I think the committee, the appropriate committee is the one we've uh, labeled reimagining public safety. And uh, uh, I think Commissioner Miller is chairing that uh, committee. And um, what, um, what I'm trying to do, uh, Ms. Parson, uh, and for the commissioners, is not to reinvent the wheel or to rethink things that have already been uh, deeply considered, but trying to narrow our focus. Well, well, first, trying to educate us as commissioners on the state of play, and then trying to narrow in on uh, what the police uh, role has been and to get to a point where we can understand from the SMPD's point of view uh, what they think should change or could be better, but also to get expert input from the other participants uh, in this space of dealing with the challenges of our unhoused population and, um, and get input from them as well about um, what additional changes or modifications people think should be made. And um, uh, I, I don't have a, um, uh, a fully informed point of view on uh, any particular course of action right now. I just think it'd be fruitful to have a discussion that maybe hasn't fully happened in a public venue just because of the structure of how we do things. So that's what I have in mind. So, so we have to balance sort of getting the commissioners up to speed on the state of play with not wanting to reinvent the wheel or have lengthy meetings. So if somebody's already done a report, there's been reports to the city council that were really well done, uh, maybe you can find some of those and that will allow us to sort of get caught up. Sure, that sounds good. Any other questions or comments on, on this topic? Okay, seeing none, uh, Ms. Parson, can you go to the next item? I can. Item G, receive and file status update or staff report on identifying additional training opportunities for understanding racial equity and provide direction to staff on next steps. I have identified several options for this. Um, I was holding to get the updated training schedule from Santa Monica Police Department. Um, on the Commissioner Academy since that was put on pause um, before moving into um, proposing that we that you all register for another training just to make sure the dates don't conflict. Um, I did reach out to, I hope her title is Sergeant Akuthi, to get an update on when they plan to resume that training. And I will um, then reach out to all of you to share the um, racial equity training dates to figure well, out what was for your schedules. Okay, well, let me clarify because I don't want you to get ahead of the commissioners on this. Um, in the ordinance, there are a few different categories of training that the ordinance um, either requires or recommends. Uh, we'll have to look at the language that the commissioners um, uh, obtain. Mm -hmm. And one of them is an understanding of racial equity and what I think the request of you is, is not to sign us up for anything, but to survey the landscape and see what the choices are, and then come back to us so we can have a discussion to find out what the commissioners want to do. I think part of your work should include uh, circling back to Commissioner Cruz, who I believe may have, some, may have had some thoughts on this when we first raised it. Uh, and if anyone else has thoughts on it, uh, per perhaps Commissioner Scott, who wasn't able to make it so far, uh, may have some thoughts on it as well. Uh, I just recall her making a few comments about it from time to time. So the so the to-do, uh, Ms. Parson, is to uh, come up with some choices and options so that the commissioners can uh, have, a, have a discussion and figure out what we want to do. Yep, that's absolutely no problem, and I do have those options. Uh, what I'll do is write that up and submit that to the commission so that you can review them. And then we can have a discussion about what you'd like to do at the next meeting, if that works for everyone. Okay. Um, I look like I saw a flash that Commissioner Scott may have joined the call. Is that, uh, is that true? Commissioner Scott, are you here? Yes, I am. All right, welcome. 
I'm going to put a check mark next to your name. Thank you. I'm eating. Uh, as soon as I'm done, I'll get on camera. And an asterisk. All right. Um, all right. Let's move to. I'm sorry, uh, Commission, uh, Ms. Parson. Uh, can you make your last summary point again? What What are you? Uh, yes, what's the follow up? I will up provide here? a write up of all of the training opportunities that I've identified and okay. share that with all the commissioners via the SharePoint site. Um, you all can review that, and then at our next meeting, you can uh, we can have a discussion about what you'd like to do. Terrific. Okay, uh, why don't you move to the next uh, agenda item? Mm -hmm. Receive and file status update or staff report identifying additional training opportunities for oversight of law enforcement and provide direction to staff on next steps. On this, I do have a question for you all just to guide uh, the options. There are very few live trainings that you could attend. Um, one one offering is from the National Association of Civilian Oversight of Law Enforcement. It is happening now. Um, there are additional sessions that um, the commissioners could attend through October. There's also an in-person conference in October, um, but I wouldn't. That would involve flight to Phoenix, etc. So there are maybe one to two live sessions and a large number of webinars, et cetera, that are listed as best in practice trainings for civilian oversight. And I wanted to get some guidance from you all as to whether you prefer that we focus in on live trainings or whether you're comfortable with recorded trainings as well. Uh, I would say from my point of view, um, mm, like the last subject, I'd like to start with a list to see what the choices are. No. I'm allowed because my stepmom is already. Uh, whoever's got their uh, audio on, can you turn it off? Uh, I think it looks like Mr. I Ray. believe that Dina Fraser. Yeah, can you turn your, yeah, there you go. Thank you. I did it. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I'm yes. happy to write up the list um, and circulate it with the, with the full commission so that you can see what's out there and then discuss what you'd like to do at the next meeting. In addition, I think that one of the considerations we might have before we make a choice is that when our inspector general uh, gets on board, we might see what kind of uh, debrief we can get from, from them on uh, their experience with civilian oversight models. Yeah. And that OIR might then help shape what choices we do. The OIR group actually offers this training. Um, and so we may, you may decide that you'd like to, to have them offer it to the commission as part of their services. Got it. Commissioner Centeno? Uh, yes, uh, Lisa. Um, so you'll make clear on not only the type of training, but uh, whether that's going to be offered in person or on webinar uh, online? Yes, I will. Okay, thanks. See any other commissioners with questions? And so I think we can move to uh, agenda item 10. And um, under agenda item 10, <clears throat> what, uh, what we'll do once we have our committees uh, actually active and doing things is we'll get committee reports. And there's only been one active uh, committee since our last meeting, and that's been the operations committee. So 10A um, is a, a committee report from the operations staffing and budget uh, uh, committee. And uh, uh, I will, uh, just briefly re recap what I said earlier in the meeting, and that is that we've been meeting weekly to, uh, with all commissioners invited uh, to get input on our report uh, that's due to the city council in late September. Uh, I may uh, uh, continue to have weekly meetings, but um, I may um, uh, do it in the form of a special meeting of the full commission. And the challenge there is we've got to get a quorum or else we can't have the meeting. But if we notice it as a committee meeting, it's easier to get a quorum. So, uh, you know, one of the uh, side notes here is that everyone should get familiar with how to access your city email account that you'll get because all of our formal uh, commission communications get posted there. and. Uh, many of us have multiple email accounts and are busy 
uh, doing whatever we did before we joined this commission. And uh, and uh, so so uh, some, sometimes people don't check their city email um, as often as perhaps would be prudent. Uh, so I would say ch check that email for for uh, information uh, coming out. Yes, Commissioner Centeno. So do you when you uh, have a meeting do you send out an email just a, a, a blast email to all the commissioners? Let me, yeah, let me talk about the process a little bit. So for all of our standing committees are required to be compliant with the Brown Act. And that means they need to have a noticed, a publicly noticed agenda uh, uh, before the meeting can be held. I believe it's 72 hours notice. And so, um, uh, so what we've been doing is I'll, prepare an agenda and I'll send it to Ms. Parson and she posts it onto our website. And I usually distribute it to the full commission with a blind CC when it's ready. Um, but if you're feeling like you're not getting those pushed out at you regularly enough, maybe Ms. Parson can come up with some additional ways to alert us that there's a new agenda item posted. That would be great. Uh, Ms. Parson, did you take a note there? I did. I mean, my idea is just I'll email you all. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, and maybe uh, email us more than once. Some of us are dense. I'm not, I mean, I'm speaking <laughs> for myself only, but sometimes getting that reminder is good. <clears throat> uh, okay. Uh, 10B, uh, discussion, uh, what, uh, Ms. Parson, why don't you read 10B, or the, the agenda item? Just a minute. Parson is writing the minutes while she's doing the meeting. 10B, discussion of recommendations and future written report regarding the agreement between the city and the Santa Monica Police Officers Association relating to the operations of the commission through September 12th. Okay, um, you know, there's been a lot of public discussion on this topic uh, already. I just wanted to make space for us to uh, say anything additional we want to say that's 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 maybe hasn't made its way into the record. Uh, I will say for my part, um, I became um, very concerned when we uh, uh, received the a copy of the agreement that had been entered into with the uh, between the city and the POA, which required city council approval. And one of the reasons I became uh, concerned is because we, as a commission, hadn't been made aware fully the extent to which the uh, police union was still trying to uh, do its best to stop the commission from moving forward. And so I thought that uh, one, regardless of the content of the agreement, the fact that the, uh, that the union wanted to block civilian oversight was important and needed to be brought to the attention of the community so that they could pay attention and weigh in on the topic. In addition, my view and uh, I'm not going to go into detail because I've expressed it already, is that the agreement was uh, overbroad for what would have been needed for a temporary stay. Uh, and so uh, the, uh, the, the detailed attempts to restrict us from asking for information or making a recommendation or getting uh, uh, writing any written reports I thought was uh, overkill. And then finally, I thought that um, uh, there's uh, some really important risks uh, present due to the mere fact of the temporary agreement. The two risks are one, that it could be extended for some indefinite period of time, which would effectively really, uh, really hamper uh, the commission. Um, and so we really don't want the city council to do that. And the second concern is that um, implicit in the agreement is that there might be a deal, and any such deal would be um, 
done without the commission's participation and without the community's input on that, and we ought to be concerned about that. Um, so, uh, especially knowing the history of how the union has, has behaved relative to the effort to have civilian oversight. So those are my general views and they've been expressed. Uh, I've done my best to raise the alarm, tell the world, tell community uh, groups that this is happening uh, and trying to get the attention of uh, anyone who might be able to do something to, uh, to support and uh, maintain the effectiveness of our, uh, of our effort as a commission. So I'll stop there and ask uh, commissioners if they have any additional uh, thoughts they wanna uh, say now, and then we'll take some public input as well. Commissioner Devermont. You're on mute. I'll, I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll figure yeah. it out. Yeah. Um, we are a little bit down the road from when this agreement was first implemented and agreed to. It may be helpful to this commission if uh, we had kind of an update as to the status on what's been happening during the time that this agreement's been in effect on the other side. I don't know if that can be done here or in another way, but it might be helpful. I can fill you in in very general terms without getting into specifics, um, but we have been negotiating with the SMPOA to see if we can reach an agreement that would resolve um, their PERB complaint in a way that we think would not detrimentally affect the operations of the commission. Okay, uh, Commissioner Centeno, did I see your hand? I just, I just wanted to offer that I believe uh, in the share folder uh, is the complete complete uh, concern and filing from the POA to the city attorneys and the city's response to that. And you can read all it. It's 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 right there for everyone to read. Um, and I would recommend you read it along with the. Uh, I think there's another article in there from a similar um, case that occurred in Sonoma County. Uh, thank you. Any other uh, comments? Uh, Commissioner Miller. Well, I would just like to express my appreciation to the uh, chair and the vice chair of this commission for their willingness to speak truth to power. Um, and I would also uh, like to suggest that um, as part of the public discourse of late, I've heard it suggested that it's as a consequence of the 2020 election that there's such pervasive influence of the uh, POA um, on these matters. And I would just respectfully suggest that influence has been um, a, um, a uh, reality in this city uh, for many years. And I'll leave it at that for now. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, Ms. Parson, are there any uh, public members of the public that wanted to speak on this issue? Well, before we do that, uh, it looks like I've got Commissioner Scott. Yeah, thank you. Um, I guess I wanna just echo uh, what Commissioner Miller just said about um, Commissioner Brown and Commissioner uh, Devermont uh, just proceeding ahead and continuing to encourage us uh, to do the work at hand although we are restricted in doing so. Um, but definitely, you know, um, I think I've probably already expressed my <clears throat> feelings and emotions about uh, feeling limited and kind of, lack of a better term, underhanded. But, you know, um, again, this is, it, I guess it all just goes into what the work is all about, which is reimagining, right? And just trying to do it collectively and, Again, uh, I think the intent, what everyone needs to still understand is that it was never an us versus them, but it was just all of us just doing this together. Let's all just get the work done we have been tasked to do. And and I'm just like, let's just full speed ahead. Okay, uh, Commissioner Devermont. Uh, I actually, uh, if Mr. Cardona is still available, I'd actually have one more question. And 
statement for him. I'm still here. <laughs> I appreciate that. And I just want to thank you for defending the commission and the San Marcos City Attorney's Office for defending the commission and standing up for us against this action. Um, is it possible? I don't know what it is. I don't know what the constraints are legally in terms of uh, confidentiality and others. Is it possible for this commission, either in private, I don't know if we're allowed to go into closed session, or publicly to be briefed before any other agreement is entered into? So our commissions have not done closed sessions. Um, and so that's, I don't think, an option for our commissions. Um, they have never done closed sessions um, uh, in connection with litigation. Um, so um, I expect to be discussing any potential settlement with the city council. And obviously I can take direction from the city council as to how to proceed with respect to the commission. Um, I would not be averse if, for example, um, the chair were to request a, a briefing on um, on the potential settlement, but there would be limitations on his ability to share that information with the balance of the commission until any until there was something in public. Thank you. I, I very much appreciate it. Commissioner Miller. Well, I'm an optimist, and I want to uh, continue to hold out hope for um, I think the city attorney is represented and what I know the POA, um, some rank and file members of the POA have represented which is this is a very temporary matter, which actually is designed um, to culminate on uh, September 27th. So on the 28th, I will be celebrating my mother's 85th birthday, and I very much hope to be celebrating the unfreezing of this commission's important work. Thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Parson, I've got on my notes that uh, there's a Mr. Champagne, Ms. Berlin, and Ms. Kuhn are, have raised their hand, and there may be others. So uh, can you uh, navigate that for us, Ms. Parson? I can. Right now they are the only uh, speakers with their hands up, so we will yeah. hear in that order from Bert Champagne, and then next will be Joanne Berlin. You have uh, uh, under three, let's keep it to three, three minutes or less. Uh, thank you, um, Chairman Brown and, and commissioners. My name is Bert Champagne. I'm a strong supporter of Santa Monica's for Democracy. It's troubling to me that the Santa Monica Police Officers Association is fighting for civil, is fighting against civil oversight in this way. What's equally troubling to me is that city officials knew about this POA desire to block the commission this whole time. It's kind of like a charade. Um, you were all appointed to serve as a symbol of the city's commitment to oversight, accountability, and meaningful reform. They voted for you. They were the ones who put you in, this, in these positions, which is very important when we talk about the city council voting against you, or uh, voting against um, some of these things. After four months, there's finally a full commission, and I had hoped, because we had the two new join tonight, that the council and Santa Monica Peace Department would be cooperative and supportive of this commission. I fully support this commission and all the work that you're doing. I was wondering what I could do as a member of the public to influence council to hasten the end of this temporary agreement and for Craig's sake, make his mother's birthday great. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Champagne. And, uh, I think I saw a commissioner's hand up, so my apologies. I'm going to go back to uh, my commissioner first, Ms. Uh, Mota. Can you please be quiet? Can you hear me? We can hear you, yes. Oh, okay. Um, I have a question for Mr. Cordona. Um, now for the settlement is that going to be you is that going to be paid using uh, public taxpayer funds so i i'm afraid i can't answer that question i can't comment on what the potential terms of the settlement that are under discussion are okay that's all i wanted to know okay thank you okay miss parson who's next on our list next speaker is joanne berlin Okay, please go ahead, Ms. Berlin. Yes, thank you. Um, I just want to uh, speak about 
the importance of any kind of police oversight commission being civilian. Um, the best practices have been shown to uh, have oversight commissions and the ones that have been the most effective, I think, in this country so far at actually bringing about um, the kind of reimagining and change toward justice and fairness and equity that we all hope for have been those that are civilian. Um, the police um, uh, officers association, it, it, it's, it's an association. There is a question in some people's minds as to whether it's actually a real union or not. Um, so I, I think that police um, having oversight over themselves has been shown not to be very effective in Santa Monica, but certainly in, in recent years. And uh, so I, I'm hoping that the um, decision will be that um, the Oversight Commission is indeed uh, civilian folks and certainly the police will have a relationship to it in some way, but not actually be commissioners, I'm hoping. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Parson, who's next? Next speaker is Meredith Kuhn. Uh, good e Hi, good evening, commissioners. Um, my name is Meredith Kuhn, and I'm an organizer with Santa Monicans for Democracy. Um, I just first wanted to thank you all for your hard work and dedication to police reform and civilian oversight, both of which Santa Monica clearly needs. Um, I actually spoke up during last week's committee meeting, but I believe this topic is of the utmost importance and due for further discussion. Um, so with that said, I wanted to voice my concern regarding the agreement the city made with the POA. Um, I'm specifically troubled by the lack of a fixed end date for this agreement. Um, the agreement states that the assumed end date will be September 27th, but as George pointed out, they're able to ex extend that date to their will. Um, considering the numerous delays this commission has already faced, I would have hoped the city would assist the commission in any way necessary, not set it back even further. Um, I was wondering if there was anything that could be done to maybe expedite this process or make sure that there is that fixed end date of September 27th. I'm um, gonna help you all get back to the issues you are appointed to address. Thank you all. Have a good night. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Parson, are there any other public uh, comments on this topic? There are not. Okay. Then our last agenda item, um, as per usual, is to uh, allow for a public uh, input on uh, matters that haven't already been discussed on the uh, agenda. And uh, as the agenda notices, we, the commission can't take any action on any of those uh, suggestions. Are there any other members of the public waiting uh, to speak, Ms. Parson? see any, but I did clear all of the previous raise hands. So okay. if uh, Mr. Champagne or others want to speak again on something that they haven't spoken on, please re-raise your hand. Can okay. I speak on something that took place on May the 31st? Uh, you're welcome to speak. Okay, so, so sorry, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry, just, uh, I said, please go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to share um, on what took place for me um, on May 31st at the corner of 4th and Santa Monica Boulevard in the middle of the chaos. The, I was trapped right when, in the middle of all that was going on, the looting, the violence and so forth. And I was really traumatized by what was take going on, what that was taking place at that time. And matter of fact, just thinking about it right now, I'm, I'm just experiencing that trauma. However, one of my main concern with all that was going on was being black. And sure enough, as I was crossing the street in the intersection, the police officer raised his rifle and I was walking and something said, turn around. And then I saw the other officer, which I call the good officer, slowly and gently put his hands on top of the other officer and put his hand down. 
And I turned mm -hmm. around and said, what are you going to do? Were you planning on shooting me? And um, that was something I'll never forget. You know, and, and like what was in the mind of that officer who held his rifle up at me while I was walking? Thank you for your uh, report of that uh, that incident. Um, I'm going to suggest actually that we make a note to follow up on that because there may be body worn camera footage that we should look into. This is uh, uh, uh we'll, we'll we'll follow up. Are there any other members of the public that have a comment? Seeing none. Okay. Um, I don't know how to raise your hand on the computer. I'm sorry. Oh, is that Ms. Fraser? Yeah. Yes, please uh, go ahead. Uh, typically, often we just turn our cameras on, the video on, then we know someone wants to talk. Uh, that works sometimes. There you go. All right, okay, please can you hear go me ahead. See? Yes, yes, okay. please. So I also, I kind of want to comment on the incident as well. Like uh, Donna Brown was saying, um, my daughter is not here to speak about it, but if possible, I would like to speak on her behalf. Please. because I got the aftermath afterwards. But I know that what she was one of the um, quieter protesters that was shot with one of the rubber bullets and also pepper sprayed real bad. And um, her take on it was they were on one side being very, very quiet and he was asked to, since their group was very, very quiet and just, you know, chanting or whatever, saying it quietly, she was asked to go over to the other side and try to quiet down the other people. And she went over there saying, look, just quiet down, you know, and then, you know, there won't be a problem. And she said that she was greeted by two police officers, which one of them she did know. And she said that she was told to get out, to go over to this area where she felt like the police were pushing the crowd up into the area where all the action was taking place as far as the looting and everything else. She felt like the police were forcing them up a certain area. And she was saying that she was talking to the police officers at one point, and then they told her to get over into this other side that was a little rowdier. And she said when she started walking, she said then she was shot with the bullet, the rubber bullet, and then she was pepper sprayed. And I mean, I was sort of outraged because I know I started off with her and some of our other friends started off with her as well. And it was very, very peaceful and very, very quiet, you know, and for her to call me at night and say that she was pepper sprayed and then shot with uh, one of your rubber bullets, I was really, really just kind of shocked. And she was saying that she was the crowd. They were trying to push them into the group of people who were doing all the vandalism and stuff like that, trying to carouse them sort of like in a group. She said, but that wasn't us, but they, but the police were trying to push them all that way. And um, I was just really just a little bothered by the fact that, you know, she was asked to come over there and quiet down that group. And then the police officers told her to get away. And as she's walking, it was sort of like as she turned her back, they shot her with one of the rubber bullets and then pepper sprayed her. And, you know, um, I know for a fact I have a daughter who you know, has seizures. And if that rubber bullet would have hit her in the head, it would have been very, very serious. And the fact that, you know, you would pepper spray some of these young adults, it's just ridiculous. So I was really, really just angry about the fact that this is what happened to something that started off very, very peaceful. Thank you. you know? Thank you for that so. report. I'm going to take a note of this as well. And, and, uh, uh, try to follow up. Uh, so we may circle back to you. 
Thank, Thank you. you very much. I appreciate your, your coming forward. Thank you. Yeah, are there any other members of the public that wish to say anything? All right. Uh, seeing none, uh, we're going to adjourn the, the meeting, uh, except Commissioner Scott would like us to stay one minute longer and Commissioner Deverman. So go ahead, Commissioner Scott. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, and, and thank you both, uh, uh, Ms. Frazier and, and um, Ms. Brown for sharing um, your your situations because I think it does uh, speak to things. First of all, uh, we're looking at in both recollections, they had their back toward the office when, when these situations occurred. And then at, the, at my second point, um, and I know we kind of briefly talked about it uh, with Chief Seabrooks, um, I believe it was two, week, two meetings ago, where we did mention that there are some body camera footage that we have not seen. And that is the ones that are belonging to the other agencies that were involved. So I think the city attorney is going to tell us that we're off agenda and out of oh, order. Okay. I'm, I'm just going to, I'm just going to remind everybody that these are public input items, and so the commission can't okay. take action. Oh so yeah, I'll, oh absolutely. Can treat, yeah. We can treat that as a short response to the comment, but thank but you. Further, anything else would have to be agendized at a future meeting. Okay, let's agendize that. Thank you. Yes. I yield my time. Okay. Uh, <laughs> good. Now. I see another member of the public, which I'll, who I'll call on in a second, but Commissioner Devermont, was there something you wanted to say? Well, I, I just wanted to say before before uh, we um, close this meeting, I just wanted to thank you, Chair Brown, for all your service. You're amazing. And also thank uh, City Attorney Cardona and Chief Seabrooks for hanging with us through the entire meeting. That's all I was going to say, but it appears we have a member of the public who wants to speak. So, you know, yes. I'll put you down where it is. Yeah, well, we have we have so many people that showed up. I'm I'm just uh, pleased that uh, that anyone's paying attention to us at all. So, uh, you know, opportunity to speak, uh, Miss uh, Leslie. Did you have your hand raised? Yes, I did. Um, yeah. switch, switch phones. Um, I just wanted to say this uh, to add to Miss Frazier's account. I picked up her daughter that evening. And there was one thing that she forgot to mention was that she was fired upon by officers that knew her. Her daughter is a PAL participant. She's a PAL alumni. So I don't know who gave that order to shoot at her daughter, but I think that speaks volumes to what took place that evening on May 31st. Thank you. Do, do you happen to know if they, if the, Daughter knows the name of the officers. Um, I'm not sure. No. Okay. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. This is important. You know, some a lot of these stories get lost when we get reports like the OIR group report that just kind of say in uh, abstract form that there were some incidents that should have been looked into, but they don't uh, go into detail to tell you what uh, what the full story is and and uh, and these kind of things are um, just they're abhorrent and and uh, and they shouldn't happen and it um, raises a lot of questions and issues uh, that uh, the commission I think will want to address. Uh, so thank you again. Uh, I, I really appreciate you all being uh, brave enough to come out and wait till the end of the meeting and then uh, and continue to, to tell the story of what happened. We appreciate it. And with that, I'm going to. Uh, uh, call the meeting uh, to an end. So we are adjourned. Thank you so much, everybody, for participating. Thank you. Have a good night. Hey, good night. Thanks, everyone.